sorry, last time we were doing um, x power 2. Do you remember what the name for this is? What is the name for x power 2? Um. Is it linear? It's most definitely not linear, right? Because um, linear means it's x power 1. Here we have x power 2. This is what you call a quadratic, OK? OK. It's quadratic, and the shape is going to be a U, either upside, either like a normal U or like an upside down U. Just like how if you have a, a negative slope, right, you go mm -hmm. down. And if you have a positive slope, then you go up. Same thing here. The slope, or it's not technically the slope, but um, it's if you have a negative sign in front of it, it's going to be downwards. If it's the positive sign, it's going to be upwards. So this is called a quadratic, OK? Mm -hmm. And quadratic has three main properties. Um, the graph will look something like this. So it has two different x-intercepts, OK? Because it's power of two, right? The power of two means how many x-intercepts it can have. So in this case, it's going to have two different, whereas a linear one only had um, one x-intercept, right? This one has two different x-intercepts. A linear function has a slope, um, but a quadratic function has something that you call a vertex, which is like the pointiest part of the graph. Just like in a triangle, you see this is a vertex, this is a vertex, this is a vertex. Well, triangle means tri. Tri means three. It has three different vertex vertices, but a quadratic only has one. And the vertex will always be right in the middle of the graph, always, right in the dead center of the graph. So if you know this point, and if you know this point, you can just find, um, just add them up and divide by two to get what this is. And the final thing is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the same thing as it was for linear, where the function touches the um, y-axis, okay? So three different properties, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and the vertex. And once you have all three, you can basically graph this precisely. Um, so last time we're doing some factoring, right? There's three different types. Um, here, let's look at this. Look at J. Any ideas on how we can factor that? So that one, again, that's in the form of this a squared minus b squared. That's going to give you a minus b, a plus b, OK? It's a difference of squares. So in this case, what's a and what's b? So if a squared is 25x squared, what would a be? Um, 25x? No. You need to square root both of those guys. It'd be 5x. Oh, okay. Here's another question. If a, um, if a squared is 25x4, what would a be? Um, 5x to the power of 2? Yeah, exactly. Just need to square root both of them, OK? So we know mm -hmm. a is 5x. So what's b in this case? Um, 8. Yeah, so there you go. 5x minus 8, 5x plus 8. That's one way to factor things. Difference of squares. This only applies if you have something squared minus something squared. OK. Let's look at k. k is just a GCF question. What can we pull out of the whole thing? Um. Three. Yeah, if you pull out a three, what are you left with? So divide everything in here by three, right? So three x squared over three minus 15 x over three, 21 over three. So we're pulling out a three. What's 3x squared over? X? Yeah, x squared, x squared. 3x squared oh, over okay. 3 is x squared. What's the next term? Um, 5x squared over 3 minus 5x. Yeah, what's the last term? Mm, just 
just seven? Yeah, just seven and you're done. Okay. Okay. What about this one? What can we pull out? You can pull out X. Yeah. Now what are you left with? Um, So you can ask yourself, there's three X's, yeah, X cubed. Mm -hmm. You take out an X, what are you left with? Um, to the power of two. Yeah, so there you go, that's your first term. What's the next term? Two X to the power of, oh, it's just two X? Yeah, what was the last guy? One. One, exactly. So there you go. This is uh, the GCF factor. GCF means greatest common factor. That's the thing that you can pull out, okay? The other way was um, A squared minus B squared. That's called what? Um, A difference of squares. Okay. Okay, there's one way, there's two ways. Now, that there's a third way, which we kind of did last time. Um, where there is, it's not a difference of squares, nor can you pull anything out. Like in this case, look at this. There's no GCF here. Well, the GCF would be one, but um, that doesn't help us. And it's also not in the form of a squared minus b squared. For a question like this, what do we do? Um, M-A-N. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna use the man method. Now, how does this work? If you have a quadratic in this form, okay, it's always going to add up to the term that's with the x. So in this case, a 7, okay, adds up to b. And it multiplies to a times c. So what would it multiply to here? So a is 1. c is 12, right? So it's going to multiply mm -hmm. to 12. Alrighty. What are the two numbers that satisfy these conditions? Three and four? Yeah, exactly, three and four. So once you have these numbers, right? Once you have these mm -hmm. numbers, what you're going to do is you're going to break down the middle guy, the B value, the one that adds up to 7, into 4x and 3x, like that. OK? Uh -huh. And then you want to factor this uh, two terms at a time. So from the first two, what can we pull out? X. Yeah. What are you left with? Um. Just four? No. There'll be two terms. X times something is X squared. X. What are the next term? Um, four. Four, right. And then from the next term, you're going to do the same. You're going to pull out the sign first, so plus, and what do they both have in common? Um, they both go into three. Yeah. And what's left in the bracket? X plus four. Yeah, exactly. X plus four. What's the next step? Now you want to pull out that bracket, the bracket with an X plus four in it. Um. It'll be um, x plus 3 times x plus 4. Mm -hmm. You want to take out the whole bracket, right? Like for example, if you had x times a, well, a in this case is the bracket, plus 3 times a. If you pull out an a, you're left with x plus 3. Same idea here. 
Okay. You can just factor this out, okay? Give me one second. I need to grab a different pen. Give me a sec, okay? All right, I'm back. How do you find this unit so far? Um, okay. It's something neat, right? I mean, um, it's a little bit different than what we did before, but um, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. All right, but it does get a little bit difficult though. Like the hardest part is coming up with, with the numbers. Like, like look at let's look at this one. So what type of a question is this? Or how do we go about factoring this one? Um the M A N. Right, the MAN. So what does it multiply to? Um, so it always multiplies to the B value, okay, which is like it goes like this A, B, C. Sorry, it multiplies to um, what am I saying? A times C. And it always adds up to the B value. So what does it multiply to? What does it add up to? Um, it's going to be 88. negative 88, negative 80. Mm -hmm. What does it add up to? Three. Yeah. What are the numbers? Well, there's only two things that multiply to 88. One of them is two and 44. That's not gonna add up to three, right? Mm -hmm. What could the other one be? 11 and eight. Yeah, exactly. Which one's positive, which one's negative? Now remember, they have to add up to positive three. If they're both positives, then um, they're gonna multiply to positive 88. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means one of them must be negative. But then they have to add mm -hmm. up to a positive number. So 11 and negative 8. Oh, uh, yeah. 11 and negative 8, like that. Okay. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the 3x into x squared plus 11x minus 8x minus 88. Now what do we do? Um, From the first two, what can we pull out? X. Yeah, what are we left with in a bracket? X plus 11. Yeah. From the next two, what can we pull out? And again, remember this sign is gonna drop, okay? This sign is gonna drop, so minus. Um, 
8. Yeah, what are you left with in a bracket? X minus 11. Oh, no, no. See, if you take out a negative 8, negative 88 over negative 8 is positive 11. Oh, okay. Plus 11. And then you kind of want to take this bracket out, right? You can, they both have that thingy in the bracket. You want to factor that out like that. And you're done. Okay. Now, what's the point of doing this? Um, you see, these will give you the x-intercepts. What you want to do is either you can flip the sign or you can set the each individual bracket equals to zero. Okay, like we did for um, the linear functions. How did we find the x-intercept? By setting the y value as zero. In this case, you want to set individual brackets equals to zero. The first one will give you x equals minus 11. The second one will give you x equals 8. Those are your two x-intercepts, OK? Mm -hmm. You can even find the vertex. Now, I told you this earlier. The vertex is going to be right in the dead center of these two. And um, what's in the middle of negative 11 and 8? To do that, you just add them up and divide that, that by 2. What's negative 11 plus 8? Um, negative 3. So negative 3 over 2, that's negative 1.5. So the vertex is somewhere here at negative 1.5. OK? Mm -hmm. So the graph of this, it's going to go through the x. And again, it's opening upwards because the a value is positive. It's going to go like this. It's going to go to its vertex. And then it's going to go through its y-intercept. Then it's going to come out through the x-intercept. And there you go, that's the graph. So the goal of factoring this is so that we can find its x-intercepts. OK? OK. Let's try doing some of these. Let's look at the first one. Which form is that in? How do we factor that? So always step number one, look if you can. Um, oh, it's a difference of squares, right? But uh, nothing squared is 48. So what that possibly means is that um, you can pull something out to begin with. You can GCF out something in the beginning. Now that should always be your first step. See if you can GCF out something, no matter what form it is in. It'll make the life easier a little bit. So from 48 and 27, what can we pull out? Um. So two doesn't go into 27 because right? it's not an even number. So the next number to look for is three. Does three go into both of them? Yes. Yeah, and there's a quick check for three, right? Check for three if it's divisible by three. If the in, you need to add up the individual numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. See, this is 12, this is nine. 12 is divisible by three, nine is divisible by three. This means that 48 is also divisible by three, and 27 is also divisible by three. You can add up the individual numbers, like in this case, 28. Two plus eight, that's 10. 10 is not divisible by three, so 28 is not divisible by three. Okay. In this case, both of them are divisible by three. So if you pull out a three, what are you left with? Um, 16x. 16x squared. What about the next term? Um, nine yeah nine y squared yeah now see now that's in the proper difference of squares form that's a squared minus b squared you can remember square root both the number and the letter what's the next step we're going to get two different brackets if we factor it by using a difference of squares
Um, so if a squared is 16x squared, a is 4x. What about b? B squared is 9y squared. What is B? Three. Three what? Y squared. No, no, just Y. Three Y. Oh, okay. And there you go, you're done. Mm-hmm. Let's look at E. Can we factor something out? Um. No. Yes, you can. You can factor out a three to begin with. Oh. Right, and that, that should always be the um, first step. Because it'll make life so much easier. Look at this. Factor out a three, what are we left with in the bracket? I can divide every number in there by a three. A to the power of two? Yeah. Um, 12a? Yes, minus 12a. And then? Minus 13. Yeah, exactly. Now you see the middle part in the bracket, that's in the form of man. What does it multiply to? What does it add up to? Um... It multiplies to negative 13. Right. What does it add up to? Negative 12. Yes. What are the two numbers? Um, negative 13 plus 1. Yeah, negative 13 and positive 1. And then you want to break down. Again, we don't care about the 3 on the outside. We're strictly look, looking at the inside now. Plus a minus 13. From the first two terms, what can we pull out? A. Yeah. What are you left with in the bracket? Um, 13. Right. From the next two terms, what can we pull out? Um, I don't know. If there's nothing in common, there's one in common. You factor out a one. Oh, okay. And then so we'll a minus 13? Yeah, exactly. And again, the goal is these two brackets have to be the same, okay? Otherwise, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If those brackets aren't the same, that means either two things. Either you didn't factor it right or your numbers are wrong down here. And then finally, we're going to close this off by doing 3, a minus 13, and a plus 1. There you go. We factored this. Okay. Let's look at G. Again, step one. Can we GCF something out? Um, four? Uh, yeah. And what are you left with in the bracket? X to the power of two? Mm -hmm. Plus seven X? Right. Um, minus six, I mean plus six. Plus six. So multiplies to what adds up to what? Um, it multiplies to six. And adds up to seven. Right. So what are the two numbers? Multiplies to six, adds up to seven. Um, 
um, six and one. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. That works, right? Um, multiply six. So again, you get x squared plus one x plus six x plus six. From the first two, what can we pull out? From these two. X. Yeah. What are you left with? Um, X plus one. From the next two, what can we pull out? Six. What are you left with? X plus six. No, X plus one. X plus one. Oh, okay. Six over six is a one. And again, these two brackets have to be the same. And then you just want to combine them. And there you go, you've factored it. So the two x intercepts here are minus six and minus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at h. How do we do this one? Um. They don't really go into anything. Uh, can we GCF something out? Oh, um. Like two? Yeah. Two it is. What are you left with if you pull out a two? Um, 4e. 4e squared minus um, 25. Now what do we do? Um, What do you do? Well, which form is this in now? Um. That's a difference of squares, right? You need to identify that. Mm -hmm. Something squared is 4e squared. What is that? What's the square root of 4e squared? 2e. Yeah. What's the square root of 25? 5. Yeah, and there we go. It's a difference of squares at this point, because we know something squared. This is a perfect square, so is this. Yeah, this is not a perfect square, neither is this. That's why we had to take something out, right? Because nothing squared is 8. Mm -hmm. Nothing squared is 50. 7 squared is 49, but 50 is like 7 point something. So that's not a perfect square. Does that make sense to you? Uh -huh. All right, let's move on to something else. Um, it's also something that we've done slightly before. We're going to find the zeros. Zeros just is a fancy word for x intercept, okay? To find the zeros, what you need to do is you need to set the individual brackets equals to zero. Let's look at the first one. X minus two is gonna be zero and X minus five is gonna be zero. So what is X equals to here and here? Solve for X. Um, Negative two and negative five? Not a positive two, right? Because how oh, do you get okay. it to add two on both sides, add five on both sides? Mm -hmm. What about here? What are the two x Seven intercepts? and negative one. Yeah, seven and negative one. What about the third one? Um. 
Um, positive 10. Yeah. There's another one. Comes from this. Just want to set x equal to 0. And there you go. That's it. Oh, okay. X is by itself. 0 is the x-intercept. OK? Mm -hmm. Look at A. Which approach do we use? Um, M-A-N? Yeah. So what does it add up to? And what does Negative it Negative 10. Yeah, multiplies to 9. What are the two numbers? Um, Negative 10 and 1. Uh, negative 10 and 1. Does that multiply to 9? It does not. It multiplies to negative 10. Um, negative one and nine? Uh, they're both going to be negative. Oh, OK. That's the only one that's going to add up to negative 10 and multiply to positive 9, OK? So mm -hmm. we're just going to break this guy down into negative 1x and negative 9x. From the first two, what can we pull out? x. Right, so. What are you left with in a bracket if we pull out our next? X minus one. Yeah. What about the next two terms? Again, this sign is going to drop. Okay, whatever that sign is, it's going to drop. What can we pull out? Um, nine. Yeah. And what's left? X plus one. X minus one. Because mm -hmm. nine over negative nine is. Um, Sorry, positive 9 over negative 9 is minus 1. Again, these two brackets have to be the same. So you get x minus 9 times x minus 1. Cool? Mm -hmm. So what are the x-intercepts? Um, 9 and 1. Yeah. Let's look at b. Which form is that in? Um, is it difference of squares? It is. So x minus 2? Yeah, x minus 2 and x plus 2, right? Straight up. Mm -hmm. A minus B plus B. So what are the two x intercepts? Two and negative two. Yeah. Let's look at C. What do we do that for that one? Um, x minus three x. Uh, no. You know, G C have something out first. Oh, x. And what are you left with? X minus 9. Yeah. And that's it. That's as far as you can factor. Um, what are the x-intercepts? Zero and nine. Yeah. OK, and you're done for this one. Let's look at this one. 
Uh, for this one, we're going to have to work backwards. What are the x-intercepts for a? Look at the graph. Um, negative one and zero. Uh, no, not zero. Negative one and three. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where does that come from? If you remember, that one comes from x plus one times what? x minus 3, right? That gives you an x-intercept of negative 1. That gives you an x-intercept of 3. Mm -hmm. So that's it. x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now, if you expand it, what do you get? Expand means open the brackets. Um, to x to the power of 2? Yeah. There should be four terms here. Minus 3x. Yeah. And then plus 1x. Mm -hmm. Not the last um, one. Minus 3. Yeah, exactly. Minus 3. And then see there's like terms in the middle. Minus mm -hmm. 3x plus 1x, what is that? That is minus 2x, right? And there you go. So this question, we've worked backwards. OK. OK. But technically, what it should be is this. It should be in this form. y is equals to a times x and then ax something. As you see, bb is opened upside down, right? So the slope will be mm -hmm. negative. Our slope is the a value. Where are our x-intercepts? Um, four and six. So what does that mean in the equation? X minus four, right? Mm -hmm. What about the other one? Minus six. Yeah. Now we need to find the A value. We know the A value is going to be negative, okay? But mm -hmm. how do we find the A value? We're just going to plug in a point as X and Y. What is the coordinate of this point? Um, 5, 1. Yeah, 5, 1, right? So we're going to plug 1 as the y value, and we're going to plug 5 as the x value to see what the a value is, like that. OK? Mm -hmm. So 5, 5 minus 4 is a 1. 5 minus 6 is a minus 1. So what does this mean? What is a equals to in this case? If you just solve this for a, it's a linear equation at this point. Um, just minus one? Yeah, a is minus one. So therefore, the equation of this graph is y equals minus one, x minus four, x minus six. OK, how do we expand mm -hmm. this? If we were to expand this, or foil open the brackets, what do we get? Uh. So for this one, either you can uh, throw the negative one in first, OK? Mm -hmm. Or throw it at the end. You could do this and this, and then throw negative one at the end. Either way is fine. Do you add it at the front? Yeah, yeah you can do it both, either way. But I don't know which one. Maybe you just uh, do the um, these two first, and then you can add the negative one at the end. So just let's leave it out for now, OK? Mm -hmm. Do this with this, like what you did here. X to the power of 2. Yeah. Minus 6x. Mm -hmm. um, minus 4x. Yeah. It's the last term. Um. 
Great, plus 24, yeah? Now what? Group up the like terms in the middle. What's minus 6x minus 4x? Um, 10x. Yeah, minus 10x. Okay, and now we're going to throw the minus 1 in. Open the bracket. So basically multiply everything inside the bracket with minus 1. So minus 1x to the power of 2? Yeah. What about the next term? Plus 10x? Yes. Minus 24? Yeah, there you go, and you're done. Okay. So this, this, these questions we worked backwards. See, we could have manned it and gotten there, but uh, we went the other way around. Um, I don't want to do that. So for this one, it's just asking us to find um, the x-intercepts for this one. Like in man doesn't apply here because there's only two terms. Man is when there's three different terms. Um, what do we do here? Is it a difference of squares? Um, not yet, it's not. Because nothing squared is 0 0.05. What do you think the trick is here? Um, you can take out D. You can take out a D, that's right. You can take out more than just D. You can take out the number as well, right? You can take out minus 0 0.05 D. Oh. So what do you um, think is left in the bracket? So again, do negative, this is how you do this. Do this over this, right? Because we took this out, the denominator anyways. See this guy? Mm -hmm. The first term will simply be a D because see the negative 0 0.05 and this cancels out and there's two Ds over one. So that cancels out and you just get a D. For the next term, you do this 1.15 D over negative 0 0.05 D. Why this? Because this is what we pulled out, right? The d's cancel out. What's 1.15 over negative 0 0.05? Um, negative 0 0.05. Yeah, there you go. See, now we've factored it. So we're at our two x-intercepts. Um, 23. There's two of them, yeah. There's always going to be two of them. Well, almost always. What about this one? If you were to set this equals to zero, what do you get? How do you solve that equation? It's a linear equation. Um, Is it just 0 0.05? No, it's zero. You're um, not adding 0 0.05 on both sides. You're dividing both sides by negative 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. Right, see this cancels out and zero over anything is a zero. So there you go, your two x intercepts are zero and 23. Okay? Okay. Let's look at this one. So if you look at this equation, it looks a little bit weird. Um, 
so far we've been doing um, y equals a either it's going to be in this form or we also did some of these in the factored form right um, now this one is in a different form this is what you call the vertex form and it looks like this and now why is this significant because you see h and k is the vertex it gives you the pointiest part of the graph. It doesn't give you x-intercepts, not this form of the quadratic equation. X-intercept, you need to be in factored form. Um, all right, compare this equation with this equation. What's h and k? Um, this is h. t and one. Um, so h is one. Mm -hmm. The t is just the variable in this case is x. So h is one. What about the k? Seven point five. Seven point five. What does this mean? Let's look at the question. It's the height of a baseball um, after t seconds. Yeah. So this means according to this equation, okay, the baseball reaches a maximum height of seven point five meters after one second. Mm -hmm. And again, you see this one is, it, this is a negative sign. So that means the graph is gonna open upside down. So a rough sketch of this graph is look, gonna look something like this, where this is the vertex and we know that is one and 7.5. So it reaches a maximum height of 7.5 meters after one second. A, what is the maximum height of the ball? 7.5. Yeah. How long does it take for the ball to reach its maximum height? One second. Right. Write an equivalent equation in standard form. So standard form means this one, the one where we man it. To go into standard form from any, any form, you just need to open the brackets, okay? Minus 5 t minus 1 squared plus 7.5. So basically, we need to expand this. See, there's a squared element here. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 5 t minus 1 times t minus 1 plus 7.5, like that. Mm -hmm. and like we did in a previous question, we are going to leave the 5 on the outside. Let's first open these two brackets. What do you get? So do basically t minus 1 times t minus 1. Um, t to the power of 2. Yeah. Um, minus 1t. Mm -hmm. um, minus 1t. Yeah. Plus 1 plus one exactly. Now if you group up the like terms in the middle in, the, in this bracket, you get t squared minus two t plus one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now what you need to do is you need to open this bracket with a negative five. Multiply everything in the bracket with negative five. Negative five t to the power of two. Yeah. Minus. 60. No, no, plus 10. Negative 5 times negative oh. 2. Plus 10t. What are the last term? Um, minus 4. Uh, my, where are you getting 4 from? Negative 5 times plus 1. We're multiplying them. Okay? Oh. We're not adding them. We're multiplying them. Negative 5 times plus 1 is minus 5. Like that. Okay. Okay. You see there's like terms, negative five plus 7.5 is uh, positive 2.5, right? Mm -hmm. See, now we're in the standard form. In the standard form, the constant, the one without any x's or any t's or whatever, this is your y-intercept. 
which is also called the initial value. By initial value, I mean that time is zero, which is the answer to part D. From what height is the ball thrown? Well, that's going to be the y-intercept. It's 2.5 meters. How do you know? Because that's when the time is zero. If you plug t as zero in this equation, you'd get um, 2.5 meters as the y-intercept. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Let's look at this one. Um, so in this equation, um, the income t, yeah, mm -hmm. is the y value, and the x value is the number of tickets sold, n. Part A, find the income if 100 students buy tickets. Any ideas? Um, do you just replace n with 100? That's exactly what you do. t is equals to 1 over 10 times 100 squared plus 10 times 100 minus mm -hmm. 2,000. Why don't you try plugging this in the calculator? It's just zero. Yes, yeah, zero. That's right. Um, what does that mean? Um, doesn't really mean much. It means they made zero dollars profit. Oh, okay. Okay, so that means they didn't make any money, mm -hmm. but they also didn't lose any money. That's what it means. Right. Mm -hmm. They neither made money, they neither lost money. What is the income if no tickets are sold? If no tickets are sold, what's the value of n? Zero. Yeah, if n were to be zero, again, see, that's the x value. It gives you the y-intercept, right? What's the y-intercept in this question? Look at the constant term. Um, negative 2,000? Yeah, negative $2,000. So what do you think this means in the context of this question? Um. It means there are $2,000 in the hole, okay, if no tickets are sold. Graphically, this is what it looks like. It's kind of, well, we know the A value is actually, the A value is positive. So it's going to open upside down, okay, like that, mm -hmm. and then like this. And here, we don't really care about this part of the graph because at this point, the tickets, I mean, it's negative X values, right? Negative mm -hmm. X values. And the number of tickets sold cannot be negative, right? There are some things that just cannot be negative, like the number of people in your class, or the number of chocolates you have eaten, or the length of a rope or something. Some things cannot be negative. So in this case, we're not really concerned about this part of the graph, okay? The question only really starts after n is zero or positive. It starts down here when n is at least zero. And the x value is zero. So what might this represent? It represents the y-intercept and that's the money they have put into the program initially. Mm -hmm. To make a profit, we're going to have to find the x-intercept, you see? We need to go beyond um, a certain number. 
which we can do in part C, factor the equation. Again, in a question like this, you need to GCF out um, something if you can. So in this question, you're going to GCF out the 1 over 10. Like that. How do we factor this? Um, could you do man? Yeah, you could, but this one's a little bit tricky. Multiplies to um, negative 20,000 and it adds up to 100. We already know one of the x-intercepts because see that gave us a y value of zero. We already know one of the x-intercepts. So one of the numbers is 100. Mm -hmm. Okay, what could the other number be? It's actually minus 100. The other number is 200. Oh, okay. So if you go to man this, you're gonna get, here's a shortcut for man, by the way. If the a value is a one, right? In this case, mm -hmm. inside the bracket, you can just write this as n plus 200 times n minus 100, like that. And now we've factored this equation. So one of the x-intercepts is a positive 100 right there. And the other one is negative 200, but that doesn't make much sense in the context of the problem because you can't really sell a negative number of tickets, right? from a logical standpoint. And there you go, that's the whole question. Here, tell me, um, so in this question, it's the height of a flare, okay, after T seconds. From what height was the flare fired from? Um, What's the initial height of the thrower? Look at the x-intercept, okay? Sorry, not the x-intercept, y-intercept. Um, is it 25? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It was thrown from a height of 25 meters. And now it's asking us to find, um, so basically what's going on in this question is we know our y-intercept is 25, and you see the a value is negative. There's a negative sign in front. That means this graph is gonna open upside down, like this, like an inverted u, okay? Mm -hmm. Like that. And again, we don't, we don't care about this part of the graph. Why not? Look at what it represents. What does the x-axis represent? Time, right? Uh -huh. Can time be negative? No. That means we're going back in time, right? We're time traveling. That is not possible, not logically. So we don't really care about this part of the graph. For us, our graph is gonna start right there. And it's asking us to find how long the flare was in the air. For that, you just wanna pull out the GCF of five, like that. And tell me two numbers that add up to negative four and multiply to minus five. Um, it's minus five and one. Oh, okay. okay. It's minus five and one. So for that, again, you can use a shortcut method here because the A value is one, T minus five, T plus one. So that means the X intercepts are negative one and positive five. So there you go, five seconds is the answer to this question. Because the other X intercept of negative one doesn't make sense because time cannot be negative. So it was in the air for five seconds. Okay. okay. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right, let's call it a day for here. I'll see you all next week. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.